optical finder on this thing. Hey guys, welcome to another WYS by Adam Lash. Today I'm going to talk about the Nikon D3500 and whether or not you should buy this camera, what are the pros and cons, and what I think about it in general. So right off the bat, this camera is an entry-level camera. The Nikon 3000 series is meant for hobbyists, for people that want to have fun, for people that are not very serious about photography or videography. So if you are new to photography and you don't know much about cameras, you don't know much about video, this camera might be a good option for you, but there are so many considerations that you got to keep in mind. Now the first thing that I noticed about this camera is its weight. This thing is very <laughs> light. I mean, in comparison to other DSLRs out there, it's small in size and it's pretty light. So that's a bonus. It doesn't really feel that cheap. Um, it kind of feels to me at least like it's high quality, um, but you don't want to drop this thing. I don't think it would survive any kind of drops, but it is light, it is small, and that's a big bonus for this kind of camera. Of course, it comes with an optical viewfinder, like you saw there, which is really nice. The D3500 has a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor, which is actually pretty impressive, um, but the sensor size is smaller. So you may find higher-end cameras out there with even smaller megapixel counts, but the sensor size is smaller. It's an APS type C camera. APS stands for Advanced Photo Systems Type C and if you're wondering what that is, have a look at this photo and the different types of image sizes. So you've got full frame, you've got APS Type C, you've got Micro Four Thirds and the rest of the camera sizes out there. The camera has a 3 inch screen which is not a touch screen. That is a major disadvantage I think. You can't touch the screen here. And the lens that comes with it is an 18 to 55 millimeter Nikkor AFP lens, which is a pretty good starting kit. Of course, it's very plasticky. You don't expect to get great results or excellent results with this thing, but you can get really decent results with this starting kit, with this starting lens. You may, you're better off getting, of course, higher end lenses. Now, a lot of people think that just because the camera is cheap, or because it's an entry-level camera, you're not going to be getting high-end results. And that's not true. It's completely dependent on your knowledge of photography, the lighting. Photography is the art of light. And also, what kind of lens you're using with your camera. So you may be using a very basic camera such as this and still going to be getting really excellent results. All right, so let's have a look at some of the other features that this camera has. Let's see. So it's got 24.2 megapixels. It's got 5 FPS, 5 frames per second for continuous shooting. That can come in pretty handy if you've got subjects that are moving, like your dog or your children, and they're having fun. You can have 5 FPS, which is not that bad, but still good to have. It's got an ISO of 100 to 25,000, and it can shoot full HD. 1080p at 60 frames per second. It's not exactly a 4K camera. Now keep in mind that Nikon has actually discontinued this model. It, it refers to it as an old model. And the reason that Nikon has done that is because it's moving or it's shifting now to mirrorless cameras. I'm gonna give you the bottom line and I'm gonna to cut to the chase here. If you don't wanna watch this video till the end, this is it. If you are going to focus on photography, but not videography, then this camera might be a good choice for you. And if you're a hobbyist or someone that wants to have fun, but not serious about photography, or especially for video, this camera is missing two important components for videography. The first of which is it does not have an external mic input. And that is a big no. If you are a vlogger or a YouTuber or even somebody who wants to shoot professional looking videos or decent looking videos, then you can't really shoot them properly because this does not have an external mic. Now, built-in mics on DSLRs are horrible. Absolutely not. Do not use built-in mics for DSLRs. I mean, that's just a big no. You may be able to circumvent this problem by some sort of an adapter. Trust me, I've tried, I've ordered an adapter and it didn't work. Maybe I, 
didn't order the right adapter, but I tried. It does not work here. That's one of the most important disadvantages that this camera has. The second disadvantage, which is a big disadvantage for me especially, is the fact that this camera does not have an articulating touchscreen like my Panasonic right there, which I'm shooting this video from. It has an articulating touchscreen, and that's a big disadvantage as well. Now, the touchscreen is a disadvantage, but you can still get around that. But having no articulating touchscreen is a major problem for me. Now, for photography, this camera can get you decent results. The lens is not that great. It's a basic lens. It's it's uh, it's a basic lens, 18 to 55 millimeters with Nikkor, um, but you can still get some pretty good results with this. If you're more serious about photography, you can invest in better lenses. So if you are someone who is new to photography, who does not want to spend more than about $2,000 or $2,500 on, on everything, the camera, the, the lenses and everything, but, what, but still wants to get decent results, then this camera might be a good choice for you. But if you're someone like me, when I got that Lumix camera, I was not actually looking into photography. I was looking in, in more into video and I, I wanted a good camera that was not expensive, that can shoot 4K, that's got um, uh, an, an articulating screen. That's why I went for that Panasonic. So if you're looking for video, then this camera is not something that I recommend. I'm gonna show you some photography samples so you can see for yourself. As for video, it's 1080p. Nothing special right there. By the way, one of the things that I liked about this camera is the charging case here. I like this battery charger. Now if you compare it to the Lumix here, the Lumix is different because you've got to connect the, this is Panasonic. You've got to connect the cable and then you connect the cable to the power outlet. But for this, it's very simple. You just add the battery here and just plug it into your power outlet. So this for me is much better than this. So that's a bonus for, for Nikon in comparison to Panasonic. The camera has also got Bluetooth functionality so you can transfer photos from your camera to your phone through Bluetooth and it's also got something called SnapBridge and I've never actually tried SnapBridge before but that is some sort of sharing compatibility so Nikon SnapBridge application must be installed on a compatible smart device before you can use the camera and that's also for sharing photos. With Panasonic cameras if I want to remove the SD card I gotta remove this first I mean, I gotta open this first in order to remove the SD card, which is pretty annoying, especially if you mount the camera on the tripod. But for this, the SD card is right here. So I think I prefer Nikon's design over Panasonic's design. That's pretty cool. It's got Nikon's X-Speed image processor, and depending on your situation, it can produce some decent results. And I guess that's just about it, guys. That was my take on the Canon D3500. Now, since Canon has already begun phasing out these cameras and they're considered old, even the D5600s are considered old, you might be, you might consider getting a mirrorless camera instead, because apparently mirrorless now is the future. A lot of people are, can, a lot of companies are doing that for their products. Now again, if you're considering the Nikon line, if you like Nikon cameras and you don't want something expensive, I suggest you get the Nikon D55 or D5600 uh, much better than this, especially because this does not have a, an external mic and it does not have an articulating screen. So if you want to do video, do not get this camera for video. If you're a photographer, you might consider this. Go ahead and get it if you want to be. If you just want to use a simple camera that is not expensive and can get you decent results. Remember, once you change the lenses, if you get better lenses, you can get excellent results even with this camera. It's got a 24 megapixel sensor, even though the sensor is smaller, but you can get really decent results with this camera. However, if you're going to do video, just forget about this camera, in my opinion. Thank you for watching and 
I'm just gonna take a picture of my my laptop and another. Okay. Oh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys. See you later.